Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Clark Brooks, but uh, if any of you have ever traveled by airplane, you may know me better as... Oh shit. Oh no. No, 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 no. All I'm saying is I'm getting the armrests. Don't try to fight it. Shh, just let it happen. It'll be fine. Um, but I am trying to lose weight like everybody else says they are. Um, it's a new year. It's a new me. Uh, I've been informed that I'm either losing weight or a girlfriend, so something dramatic's going to happen in my life this year. Uh, it's tough though if you work late and do things like this late at night because I don't know if you guys have perused the menu or not, you're not going to sell out of menu items with kale in them. Um, so I tend to wind up at places like 7-Eleven late at night and um, you know those things that turn around in the grill that kind of look like somebody took a shit inside of a churro? I'll often order something like that. and. Uh, one time a clerk actually stopped me and said, oh, sir, don't eat that. Let, let me fix you a nice hot dog instead. <laughs> you know something's bad for you when a stranger becomes alarmed by what you order for dinner and then offers up a hot dog as a healthy alternative. <laughs> but uh, speaking of that, I have noticed since I've been trying to lose weight that uh, convenience stores do actually have things like uh, apples and bananas. Uh, they don't put them out there where you can find them. They stash them in a place where you have to hunt for them like right next to the cash register, which, how are you going to see that when you're facing an eight foot wall of cigarettes? Um, so that's awful. Um, this girlfriend of mine who uh, wants me to lose weight isn't very helpful though. Uh, we'll go out to eat for dinner and she'll order something like a triple cheeseburger. And uh, meanwhile, I'm over there eating the carrot and celery platter, which, do you guys know what that is? The things you throw away when you get chicken wings? <laughs> you know Just in case you don't know, celery is a, uh, water and string, and carrots are just slightly less aggressive rocks. They're pretty much the triple cheeseburger of things that are not triple cheeseburgers. But she's munching away on her, her delicious burger, and she'll go, oh, Clark, you gotta try this. It's good, it's so good. This is actually better than crack. Now, I'm not a nutritionist, clearly, but um, shouldn't anything you put into your body on purpose be better than crack? I mean, I know times have changed, but exactly when did the standard of excellence go from gold to crack? It's like, hey, how are your triple cheeseburgers here? Well, they're good. They're not crack good. Don't blow anybody, for one. Just, just pay money and save the degrading sexual favors for Fuddruckers. You'll be fine. So sometimes when I want to live it up, I'll eat salad instead of the carrot and celery. And uh, that's easier than it used to be because remember salad used to just be green lettuce, a couple pieces of tomato, and one of three government approved salad dressings. And now you can put uh, eggs and bacon and cheese and gummy bears and corn dogs and barbecued ribs, Belgian waffles, deep fried gravy nuggets. You can dump a two liter of Dr. Pepper over the whole thing. As long as you can still see any green, government says that qualifies as salad. I like to eat mine in the dark, sobbing with Oreo crumbles and tears running down my face. Because I can't lose weight no matter how much salad I eat. I don't understand. It's weird. Um, speaking of things that are awful, um, that's what I do. I'm basically the living embodiment of a list of things that annoy me, that don't really affect me, and that's what I do. Um, anybody here vape? Any vape enthusiasts? Any vapists? I, I hate that too. It's, I was in a bar once in Ybor City. Well, it's, it's Coyote Ugly. Are you guys familiar with that? I, I don't know who decided there was a niche to fill between Hooters and an actual strip club, but they gave you Coyote Ugly. That's what that is. And this woman was sitting there, and um, I didn't know what she was doing. I thought she was filleting a Christmas ornament. But suddenly her jaw unhinged, and this giant plume of pink cloud came out of her body. And it was, this thing was so big that if anybody at Bay News 9 was actually paying attention to Feist on Radar, they would have seen a tropical depression suddenly form over Ybor City for some reason. But I must have made a face, which is one of my natural reactions when I suddenly can't see or breathe. Because she goes, don't freak out, it's not smoke. It's just vapor, don't worry about it. Oh, a little trivia for you. You know what else is vapor? A uh, smoke. Actually, that's what a vapor is, that's what smoke is. The whole Wikipedia page on it and everything. Just because this is pink and smells like cotton candy and whatever cancer you're gonna get from doing it, let's be honest, doesn't mean I want that to be my personal atmosphere while I'm at Coyote Ugly. Um, it's good though, people that do that, it helps them stop smoking tobacco, which is fine. And I respect the science behind it, although 
I'm not sure that the top minds in science working on new fruit flavored vape juice recipes, instead of curing AIDS, maybe it's the best allocation of our scientific resources. Um, but yeah, 2015, new year, new me. Um, baseball is almost here. I'm a big, big baseball fan. I like baseball. Yeah. It's not that I don't like football, and I'm not, I don't want to say football players are dumb, but you've never seen a baseball team get penalized for having too many men on the field. Like, even the smallest kids are capable of discerning that there's enough players on the field. Like, oh, there's already somebody at second base. I can shoot my pants here in the dugout. Out there. So I'm not sure why I'm criticizing football players for being dumb, because I apparently don't realize that there's no penalties in baseball. Um, so that's also very what, dumb. Track? No, right. um, My favorite hey, anyone here ever been in a relationship where you actually like the other person? I've seen that one. Okay. I don't mean like you just hope they didn't die in your house because, ew, that's gross. I mean like you wanted it on purpose to be around them when they do stuff and say things. That's kinky, but I think I could be into that. I, I know I said I had a girlfriend earlier, but I was lying about that. Because one of my hobbies is just lying to rooms full of people. Um, so yeah, I think that'd be kind of cool. I don't have a lot of luck with them, unfortunately, though. Um, it's because I have trust issues that prevent me from having a game with the ladies. Like, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like, ma'am, look, I approached you in a comedy club atmosphere and said, Hi, what's, my name's Clark, what's yours? Yeah, yeah. That's about how it goes usually, actually. Hartman? How about you? What if I approach, what's your name? Jess? Okay. You filthy lying slut. Why would, why would I just turn on her like that for no reason and attack her? Why do I automatically assume she's lying to me? I've totally sabotaged any opportunity I have to get her phone. Can I, can I still get your phone? It's not a good No? Oh. I do one wrong thing and I'm the bad guy. So that's how that goes usually. I'll give you another example. Um, I went on a date once with this woman, and we went to see the movie The Dark Knight, the Batman movie. And it was our first date, and we're in there, and the lights go down, the movie starts about 15 minutes in, and she leans over and goes, This is so fake. Now, my reasonable, mature response to that was, Yeah. It's a movie about a guy who wears a rubber suit that may or may not have nipples on it, who fights other guys who also wear costumes. I pretty much figured out it wasn't a documentary when they hand us the 3D glasses and lay in. Now on a deeper, more philosophical level, my reaction was, bitch, don't be talking shit about Batman. I have known Batman literally my entire life. I just met you. Who are you? You're nothing to me. So the movie's almost three hours, 15 minutes, and I had this instant, intense hatred for this person. And uh, which made it really awkward when she moved in two weeks later. But that only lasted like three years. So uh, back out on the market, I, uh, I approached computer dating, uh, which is a blast. Uh, a lot of women my age actually have grandchildren. And a big part of their dating profile is letting you know that they have grandchildren because they want to meet a guy who's okay with hanging out with their grandchildren. Um, I'm here with good and bad news on that front. Good news is the internet is loaded with guys who would love to spend time with your grandchildren. I'm guessing some of you are discerned that that's also the bad news. Um, but I joined OkCupid, and OkCupid sends you matches based on compatibility, percentage-wise. And uh, one time I got really excited, they sent me a 91% match, which is really good, close to perfect. And uh, I got really excited until I read the first line of a profile that said, I've always identified as being straight, however, so OkCupid's decided that the one for me is a woman in her late 40s who's just now getting around to exploring her sexuality. <laughs> Which is great. That means that she's one left up toilet seat away from becoming a full-blown lesbian. And uh, that's a bleak prospect because no matter how well I treat her, uh, it means that one straight pubic hair on a bar of soap, and she's out of there with the grandkids, and the next thing you know, I'm eating Thanksgiving alone once again at 7-Eleven. So, uh, my name is Clark Brooks. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, welcome back to your host, Mr. Jared Waters.